Hey guys, this is Bailey Stein with Android Authority, and you're watching our video review of the Meizu Pro 7 Plus. The Pro 7 Plus is really just a little bit better than the Pro 6 Plus, so a lot of what we said in that review also applies here. Well, there is one big change, and you already know what it is. It's the secondary display. Basically, Meizu has slapped on a 1.9 inch AMOLED display on the back of the phone. So what does it do? Well, there are three main information panels that you can swipe between time, pedometer, and weather. If you swipe up or down on any of the information panels, you get to the viewfinder mode. Here you can take considerably higher quality selfies with the rear cameras. In addition to these on-demand core features, the screen also shows things like new notification, event times and titles, and alarms. You can activate the screen by either turning the phone around or by double tapping on the glass. It's really nice to see Meizu seriously innovate with this secondary screen. Of course, just like with any first generation technology, there is room for improvement. The good news is, is that the hardware implementation is great. It's just the software that could use some work. In the meantime, the secondary screen just doesn't add much functional value. It's still a very cool feature though, and you'll enjoy it for its uniqueness and all of the conversations it helps start. Flip the phone over and you'll see the 5.7 inch Quad HD Super AMOLED primary display. And boy, is it a beauty. Color reproduction, viewing angles, sunlight readability, they're all great. It's an all around excellent display. We really enjoyed the size too. 5.5 inches is a great middle ground, but it's nice that Meizu is giving you the choice between a smaller 5.2 inches with the Pro 7 and a larger 5.7 inches with the Pro 7 Plus. If you're going to go with a larger model, you'll especially want to consider using a case. Meizu includes a plastic one in the box, and for good reason. The soft aluminum unibody, while very premium, makes the phone quite slippery. Thankfully, the superb build quality should make any drops a tad more forgiving. You can choose between a number of attractive color options when getting the Pro 7 Plus. We're quite happy with how the matte black looks and recommend it if you prefer a minimal look. It's a very clean design overall, from the discrete antenna lines to the flush, curved, and cornered secondary display glass. Smaller details like the integrated light and proximity sensors in the earpiece and symmetrical top and bottom bezels further solidify Meizu's keen attention to detail. There's really only one big design flaw, and that's a lack of water and dust protection. That's pretty typical at this price, but if it's something you want, know that you can spend just a little bit more to get it. One of our favorite aspects of Meizu's smartphones is their single key navigation configurations. So instead of a three key layout like you're probably used to, M-Touch on the Pro 7 Plus lets you navigate as well as authenticate with fingerprints with a single button. For navigation, you just tap it to go back, press it to go home, and swipe up from the neighboring bezel to multitask. This setup can take a day or two to get used to, but you'll end up loving it. You'll also love the low-key excellent audio setup. You can get loud and clear 32-bit hi-fi audio with the 3.5mm headphone jack. No headphones? No problem. The bottom firing speaker is actually really good. It's very loud with minimal distortion. One of the nice things about Meizu phones is that they're all unlocked and dual SIM, so you can use two different nano SIMs simultaneously with the Pro 7 Plus. Just don't plan on using it in the US, as it doesn't have proper band support for either AT&T or T-Mobile. If you think you're going to need more than the base model 64GB of internal storage, you'll want to go with the 128GB model as there's no expandable storage option. The Pro 7 Plus is packing a 3500mAh battery, and it offers similar longevity to the Pro 6 Plus. Our tests were conducted over HSPA Plus instead of LTE, so please note that our numbers may be a tad inflated. On average, we got about 5.5 hours of screen on time. We are a bit concerned with a high standby usage, possibly due to the Helio X30. Still, you can probably expect around 4.5 hours of screen on time with a full day of moderate use. When you inevitably do need to top off, you can do so with mCharge 4.0. We were able to go from 0 to 65% in just 30 minutes. That makes the Pro 7 Plus one of the fastest charging phones available. Day-to-day -day performance is excellent too, although only marginally better than the Pro 6 Pluses. It's using MediaTek's flagship Helio X30 10 nanometer chip, but that's not the whole story. The 6 gigabytes of RAM, fast UFS 2.1 storage, and well-optimized software also help ensure smooth performance. Meizu's software changes extend greatly into the foreground too. While the Pro 7 Plus runs Android 7.1.1 Nougat, Meizu's Flyme 6 skin offers a unique user experience. 
Flyme isn't for everyone, but it's one of the most well-designed Android skins to date, and is great if you're looking to try something a bit different. Flyme's clean design, fun animations, and extra features are commendable. You can expect a very intuitive user experience. The UI is colorful, bold, and responsive. There's also a strong level of consistency in Meizu's design language throughout the software, from the menus to the system apps. We also really like how Flyme includes some extra security features. For example, there's a secure payment mode, which temporarily makes some common sense changes while you're using an app like PayPal. There is something to keep in mind about the software though. Since Meizu's system updates focus on changes to Flyme more so than Android versions, it is slightly unlikely that the Pro 7 Plus will be updated to Android 8.0 Oreo. We understand how this lack of Android support might be a turnoff for some. For the cameras, we're working with two Sony IMX386 12 megapixel f2.0 shooters, one for RGB and another for monochrome. That's one more camera than the Pro 6 Plus had, but the Pro 7 Plus does lose a few features. There's no more laser autofocus, the 10 LED ring flash has been replaced by two LEDs, and most significantly, there's no longer any optical image stabilization. Sample images came out pretty similar to those taken by the Pro 6 Plus. Color reproduction is excellent, there's a good level of contrast, and images are very detailed. It's about what we expect at this price, although we do miss OIS as it would have prevented some of our sample images from coming out a bit blurry. This time around, Meizu has implemented a dual lens blur mode. This mode works by isolating the subject from the background and then by applying an artificial background blur. Sometimes it does a good job at doing so. Other times the edges aren't totally accurate and the amount of blur can be too much or too sudden. We're hoping that Meizu will improve this feature with future software updates. Unfortunately, low light performance isn't quite as impressive as daytime. As you can see, colors aren't as punchy, there's a loss of detail, and there's a fair bit of digital noise. It's fine considering the price, but it could be better. In case you were wondering, there's still a 16 megapixel f2.0 front facing camera for standard selfies and video calls. Selfies come out quite nicely, but keep in mind that you can always use the better quality rear cameras instead thanks to that secondary display. 4K video recorded with the Pro 7 Plus also comes out quite nicely. Colors look pretty good and there's a good level of detail. One of the nice features from the Pro 6 Plus that has made its way to the Pro 7 Plus is the ability to double press the home button to access the camera even when the phone is locked. As far as the camera app goes, it's a pretty standard setup. So, Meizu Pro 7 Plus, how much does it cost? Well, the global unit should retail for around $530. The smaller Pro 7 will be slightly less expensive at $430. This is easily one of the most unique smartphones that we've reviewed this year. Meizu not only managed to deliver a great overall package, but has also implemented a very cool looking secondary display, which helps the Pro 7 Plus stand out but you shouldn't buy this phone just for the secondary display. While it's useful at times, it's still very much a first generation concept. You should think of it as a bonus item rather than a sole reason for your purchase. That's not to say the Pro 7 Plus isn't worth the money. In fact, it's well-designed software and excellent hardware make it very competitive. If you're looking for something genuinely unique and can get past its quirks, the Pro 7 Plus is an excellent choice. And that will be all for this video. Please be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and hit that bell button to get notified when we release new videos. Also, be sure to check out the Android Authority website as we're your source for all things Android.